In this video you will learn about JavaScript obfuscation and minification. From time to time from your client or from your boss you can get a question. Ok, we are writing JavaScript, is it safe? Because they know that any person can download from our production website JavaScript, CSS and HTML. And they think, ok, anybody can steal our code, is it really normal like this, what can we do about it? And actually it is completely true, you can simply jump to any website and download client files like JavaScript, CSS and HTML. And it is not that bad because people can steal only client side and this will be minified code. What does it mean? Your code will look like this. Essentially you can read this code and obviously you can reverse engineer it, but it takes a lot of time and effort. And secondly, it is not possible to steal your backend code, because essentially this is the server side and it is not visible inside your browser. The result of the backend code is simply the rendered page. But essentially we store all our secure data of your users, emails or maybe payments in the backend inside database. And this is what really must be secure. And it doesn't really matter if somebody will steal your client site, because this is just rendering part of your application. Sure, if we are talking about single page application, we have lots of logic on the client. But essential, what is really important for us is user data inside database. So as I already said, it is not that bad. But the question is, can we really prevent stealing our JavaScript code? First of all, your code must be minified. This is the standard. And this is not only to prevent stealing the code, but because your code must be loaded faster and must work faster. This is why for the production website we typically minify all our files, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. What is also possible to do with your JavaScript code is obfuscate it. And if you don't know, there are lots of tools, for example online, where you can obfuscate your JavaScript, which actually means you can add lots of symbols that are not needed there, a lot of for loops, something that will be difficult to debug and understand. As you can see here, I am in JavaScript obfuscator.dev and here is my JavaScript code. This is just a property, nothing more. And we can just click here obfuscate and this is our output. And as you can see we still have here some parts of our string, but it will be much more difficult to understand correct code and reverse engineer it. And actually there are a lot of tools that can help you to de-obfuscate code, which actually means you can get some code back. As you can see here I have an example of obfuscated code and we can click de-obfuscate. And here we are getting actually nice output. But let's try to just copy paste what we have here in this obfuscator tool. And I will just paste it here inside input and hit the obfuscate. As you can see we are getting not a string with const like it was here previously. Which actually means in a lot of cases it just won't work. So the automatic process of the obfuscation is simply not possible. So now the question is, do you need to do it at all? Do you need to obfuscate your code? And the answer here is no, you should not. And actually in all companies where I worked and in a lot of other big companies, I never hear that people obfuscated their code. Why that? Because actually your bundle JavaScript is becoming much bigger. And the main idea of any developer is to have a smaller bundle site so the website is working faster. And you can't really do that when you have have a JavaScript of 1 megabyte and you obfuscated it to 5 or 10 megabytes. It simply does not make any sense, because for the browser it takes longer time to download your JavaScript and to execute it. So the bundle size is significantly bigger and the performance is much slower. So obfuscation is exactly the opposite that we are doing when we are trying to make our website faster. And most important point here, it doesn't make any sense to try and protect your client. You must truly really invest your time to protect your server, your backend and your user data inside database. And here is my bonus point for you as a developer. If you want to improve your development skills, you must know how to read your minified code in the production. Not obfuscated code, but just minified. Typically you have a situation that you have some project where you have access to the source code and then this project is running in production. 
And for example, you don't have any source maps inside production website. This is why here you can simply go to some component and you can check this output. Then you must jump to this production website and you can see here all minified source codes. And actually here you must have enough skills to understand these minified files and be able to fix bugs in production when you have them. And actually this is not that difficult, you can simply open your source code and you see here something like user service populate, we can simply look here in our minified file and you must click here on the prettify symbol, it will prettify your minified code and here we are looking for populate. And as you can see here, it is minified, yes, we can just find different things here, but at some point we are finding something similar. Yes, it is really difficult to understand, but here we can see ngon in it, and here this user service populate, which actually means we are talking about this block. And here now we can put a debugger and debug some properties at this moment to understand where our bug is. This is much more important for you as a developer than code obfuscation and protection. And actually, if you are interested to know what is npx and what is the difference between npm and npx, make sure to check this video also.